Imagine life without highways. It's not hard to imagine then that the advent of highways changed the face of the United States forever. People became increasingly connected to economic opportunities, had easier access to healthcare, and were more connected to friends and family across distances than ever. However, the advent of highways came with it unintended negative consequences. More cars on the road led to runaway pollution. Efficient public transportation was neglected. And some city planners even built highways to intentionally segregate cities. Now, I'm not here to talk to you about highways, but I bring them up because they are a great way to get you thinking about three key points about infrastructure. First, you take it for granted. Second, it lasts a long time. And third, it has both positive and negative consequences, the impact of which cannot be predicted at the time of its creation. Nowadays, there is an invisible infrastructure system that is increasingly coming to govern economic life in the US. It has its roots in the 20th century and has seen a recent wave of exponential growth over the last few years. Much like physical infrastructure, its effects extend to economic life, social and leisure time, as well as health outcomes. This invisible infrastructure system that I'm talking to you about is data infrastructure. Now, before I talk to you concretely about what data infrastructure is and what you should think about it, I want to get a little audience participation to get you thinking about it intuitively. Raise your hand if the following applies. How many of you, over the last year, have woken up, gone to turn on the faucet to brush your teeth, and wondered, where did that water actually come from? Some hands, but not that many. <laughs> now, how many of you, over the past year, have been browsing the internet, seen an oddly specific ad, and thought, where did that come from? How did they know? <laughs> Lots more hands. Over 2,000 years ago, the Romans built the aqueducts, and now we take running water for granted. Similarly, over the last 100 years, highways have been built, and now we always take for granted that we can get from point A to point B, no matter the distance. Much like the unstoppable tide of transportation infrastructure or plumbing, data infrastructure is increasingly a part of everyday life. The only difference is that it is invisible, and you have no idea how or why this is happening. The best you have is wondering about that eerily well-placed ad. So as promised, what is data infrastructure? Data infrastructure is software, but it is also infrastructure like roads or utilities. It is invisible, which is why you probably haven't thought about it before up until now. Data itself comes from many different places, such as credit card transactions, security cameras at the airport, sensor data on an ATM, or clicks and movement of your mouse online. Data infrastructure is the most fundamental infrastructure before we can make meaning out of this data. It is the pipes, boxes, and machines that do things to data, like move it, store it, and structure it so that we can use it. It is akin to oil refineries and pipelines, without which we would have no use for crude oil. Data infrastructure is how data freely flows from creation to usage. The business processes enabled by data infrastructure are increasingly prevalent because they have become possible through advances in infrastructure technology. We can process data to make jobs redundant. We can process data to create systems for early disease detection. We can process data to make machines that can fix themselves by taking in data about themselves. I first became interested in data infrastructure while working in technology private equity, investing in high growth data analytics businesses. In my free time, I was reading books about US infrastructure, and I couldn't help but notice the parallels between the roads and utilities and bridges of the physical world and the very same of the digital world. This was a thread that I had to keep pulling because it touched on so many areas that were interesting to me. Human technology interactions, public policy, hard science. I'm fascinated by the technology, but more than anything, I am both excited and cautious about the future of data infrastructure. I'm excited because there's so much this technology can do to make life better that we should nurture. We can process data from blood tests to detect cancer without invasive procedures. We can process camera data so that our cars can drive themselves. We can process sensor data to reduce bias in law enforcement and criminal justice. And we can process satellite images to identify poaching hotspots to prevent unwanted extinctions. However, I am cautious because we are in the early innings of coming to a mature data infrastructure ecosystem. 
In the future, organizations will continue to implement ready off-the-shelf infrastructure software, like installing a pipe in your home plumbing system. With this comes the risk of job displacement of people who previously did this work manually, but it also, come, but it also brings the opportunity for people to focus on more meaningful work. Beyond automation, the business processes that data infrastructure enables are becoming increasingly prevalent because the infrastructure itself is becoming increasingly prevalent. Organizations are becoming increasingly masterful at keeping your eyeballs on their social network or their infinite feed of videos that you scroll for hours before bed. Organizations are becoming increasingly masterful at using recommendation engines to help you open up your wallet and make one additional purchase. In short, organizations are becoming increasingly extractive of people and society because they are able to better collect data, analyze it more efficiently, analyze it faster, and do more with it now than ever. What will the world look like when this technology is truly pervasive? There are no easy answers to questions like these, but for three reasons, I want to convince you that you are the perfect person to answer them. Data infrastructure is poorly understood by regulators, it is poorly understood by the public, and it is increasingly becoming part of business everywhere. First, the, the regulatory framework for data infrastructure is limited. There is some legislation that tells you what data you can collect, but by and large, it doesn't say much about what you can do with that data once it is collected. It is like telling a water bottling company where they can get their water, but not what they have to do to it before they serve it to you. Second, popular understanding is fairly poor. This is fair because the technology is complex and oftentimes very new, and so decision making in this realm has, up until now, been mostly concentrated within the highly technicals, technical people of the world, such as PhDs who created the technology. And third, great data infrastructure and the business processes it enables are no longer reserved for large tech companies with big pools of technical talent. Entrepreneurs are increasingly bringing these technologies to market and spreading them throughout the corporate world. So why am I telling you that the regulatory framework is limited, that popular understanding is poor, and that this stuff is everywhere? It's to convince you that the current system doesn't have all the answers and your voice can make an impact. Business leaders of the world will be forced to make relevant choices as every organization becomes a data-driven organization. It is akin to voting. If you do not educate yourself and make your voice heard, you will not have an impact in shaping the future. That is why it is imperative that you do not let, or you do not leave the understanding to someone else. Read tech journalism. Pay attention the next time there is a technology-related congressional hearing. Talk about your ideas with friends and family. Bring this conversation to everyone because this is a topic that affects everyone. All of this said differently, the world is changing in invisible ways. The invisible roads are being built and the invisible pipes are being laid. What are the consequences if the public or the government are left out of the design choices as this invisible system is being built? Be excited about what this new technology can bring and all of the improvements to life that it can be that can come with it but never stop paying attention to it because we do not know yet what the world will look like when this technology is truly mature and pervasive unlike physical infrastructure data infrastructure is easy to forget because it is 99% invisible don't let it be out of sight out of mind thank you